My name is Naima Ramos Chapman and I'm from Flatbush, Brooklyn, and I work as an artist. I sort of precipitated into filmmaking a bit by happenstance. I went to school at Alvin Ailey. I've been dancing since I was three years old. I went to school for journalism, and then I cobbled together just my background in journalism and dance and performance. As a director, what I'm most looking for is how to maintain the feeling of spontaneity. I think because of my dance background, movement becomes just as much a part of the dance of making films. I'm always thinking, too, about where people are standing in frame and if they are going to move, that there is a reason for it. Even how the camera is moving as a participant with that performance, I think is important. And also trying to break away from an idea of how film is supposed to be made, because I think it's still such a young medium. We as artists can kind of embrace that. There are still opportunities to surprise people with even what we expect from film and what cinema can look like. My first short film is called The Nothing Happened, and it centers around the aftermath of a sexual assault. Basically, she's just trying to get out of her apartment and has to like get over these obstacles, but the obstacles are like her sister and her mom. I'm always just trying to make films that center women and not just talk about brutality and trauma, but also like figure out a way out of it. When I made my second short, Pew Pew, my protagonist, her name is Jordan. She's not a profoundly deaf person, but she has a cochlear implant and she chooses when to experience sound. And so I played with sound with a really amazing sound designer who kind of created a score that went with her feelings, but also, you know, a lot of it is in silence because that's how she experiences the world and has to rely on body language in order to get out of the situation she finds herself in when this guy stalks her. Often I find that having traveled like to Cuba by myself or other places that I'm constantly having to think about exit strategies in case something bad happens to me. So I wanted to make a film that kind of explores what the world says about women traveling alone and all the things I do and trying to push for more understanding of how it feels to have to consistently be thinking of all of these strategies just to like make it through the day um, as a young black woman living in New York City. I think what makes a filmmaker stand out is tethering themselves to how they value the world from an authentic place. For me, that's reflecting back what I see in my community. I think about like my mom and how effing hilarious she is. She just talks about her life in a way where she has to laugh. Like I remember telling her I survived a shooting and she was like, all right. And then she started telling me five stories in which she survived something. And the way she was telling me, she just was like laughing and also burying the joke here. And there's also a space to like realize that that shouldn't have happened. So I try to, in my work, have like what I call like moral spastic humor, you know, where I'm laughing, but it's cause it's a little bit uncomfortable. And then we get to a place where there is sort of hope or possibility at the end, because I think that is totally necessary in drama. Honestly, I think I was gratefully spoiled to have my first television experience be season one of Random Acts of Finest. You know, I really have to hand it to the creator, Terrence Hans, because he just sort of allowed us to have so much autonomy and freedom in coming up with ideas. And I think that was sort of the genius of the show, us like dropping ego and just kind of thinking like, what could this be? What I try to tell folks I mentor is don't be afraid to ask for help from people who you admire and respect and whose work moves you. Because you'd be surprised. A lot of people say yes. And then also take rejection even as an opportunity. And don't get discouraged from labels people put on you or other people's limitations that they're projecting. You know, I'm a Black woman, I'm Puerto Rican, I'm queer, and, you know, I don't listen to anyone. You have to trust that you can do it. And I know sometimes that sounds corny, but it's totally possible, so.